Welcome to The Real Money Show. My name is Jeremy Wiseman, Vice President of Guildhall Wealth. Joining me today is Jerry Karaya, longtime veteran associate here at Guildhall and, of course, e-store manager. Let's start with a celebration, if we will, Jerry. The e-store. We've launched a brand new e-store. Please come visit us at www.guildhallpreciousmetals.com. It's a bit cliche to say the www. but I do it anyway because it just reminds me of the good old days of the mid '90s. Mm-hmm. Internet. So, the internet. Um, e-store. Guildhallpreciousmetals.com. Jerry, what makes this e-store better than the last e-store? Jeremy, so happy to say that it's lightning fast. Got a lot of really good reviews this week from some great people that shed some light on the performance. Uh, Really easy to use. The same great product. Very clear, a very clean look, which is what we are going for, I believe, Jeremy. But overall, we're just excited to have a new new, uh, website that actually um, not just, you know, works well in terms of performance, but uh, will allow us to offer uh, various uh, different products in the future and that's what we want to do is just deliver to you listeners we appreciate your listening continuously over the show uh, over the years uh, to the show but check us out online guildhallpreciousmetals.com and i'm sure you will be impressed it's faster than ever the images are super clean it's a very clean website very easy to jump on get through we've got even sort of quick quick ways to to put things into the cart very quickly. Um, I think one of the things that we started doing here at Guildhall that is different, that started a trend in others, and not just because there was a lack of physical supply, but we started to really really bring in the inventory down to a limited amount of choice in terms of not having a wide variety of products, you know, 20 different coins to choose from. The idea was, no, look, Silver maples are the go-to. You don't need anything more than the silver maples. You need a 10-ounce bar, a 100-ounce bar silver, maybe a kilo bar of silver. These are the three bar sizes, one or two choices in each size. Keep it simple, right? Keep it stupid simple for the buyer. So love the website. Very fast. Please go on. Check it out. Prices are great. I think the prices are really good, very competitive, especially on silver. Mm -hmm. We were doing a comparison on the hundred ounce bars, for instance, and we couldn't find any anywhere that was that was cheaper than us. So definitely check out the website, Um, Jerry. There's a lot happening this week in the news. Inflation huge. Um, PPI was up 7.9%, something like that. Um, it's here. It's here. I was having a conversation with the client and, and she kept mentioning, well, you know, inflation's coming. I kept, I kept interjecting saying, well, no, it's here <laughs> because, uh, the, you know, they're talking about 5% inflation now through the central banks. And again, PPI is up over 7%. Right. And, um, it's here. Yeah. Inflation has arrived. How are we going to protect ourselves? It's about creating a hedge um, and not and, and really tackling this this huge threat to our purchasing power. And that's what inflation is. It's when you expand monetary supply, when you print too much of something, when you create too much of something out of thin air, um, it becomes less and less trustworthy, uh, usable, uh, and the credibility is just shot. And especially with the Federal Reserve and just trying to Um, talk down this inflation the transitory narrative has just gone down the drain jeremy let's let's jump in with this transitory narrative because lo and behold everyone they've changed their tune jerome powell is now walking back the idea of transitory as if this is a surprise to anyone listening to the show but jerry please update us all on how jerome powell is now doing the moonwalk on transitory inflation to the moon jeremy has totally just backtracked the the statement that sounded very factual the transitory statement it was a very uh, powerful statement the computer algorithms took it to sell off gold it was a big event in in june but uh with the hot inflation numbers that have come out red hot he's now saying well you know what we're this is a quote He's now monitoring if inflation rise is temporary or persistent. Now we're just observing. We're just going to keep monitoring this thing and just to see if it is persistent or temporary, Jeremy. Just a total flip-flop. Temporary or persistent. This is a a transition to persistence, Mm -hmm. I think, is what this is. He's gone from 
it's transitory to, well, we're going to monitor if whether or not this is going to be something that persists. And essentially, it probably will, most likely. I think it's already there. Even if even if inflation comes down a little bit, it's not going back to where it was uh, six months ago. It's over. Everyone can see it. You, you go to the pumps. You go to the grocery store. Uh, insurance, just talking to some people, insurance has been going up. Yep. Uh, prices are going to be going up everywhere. And you can call it, you know, there's going to be all sorts of excuses. There's going to be the post- covid tax right maybe restaurants start charging five dollars for bread or whatever it is it, it's it's here it's arrived now what do we do about it is the question where where, where this is all leading is that you keep your cash in the bank getting less than one percent in an environment where the dollar is losing value at five percent or more a year you are losing money having it in the bank so you better go out and spend it is is what's going to happen that's going to be decreed you better you got to go out and spend your money yeah you know i spoke to someone last week who lived in uh ukraine and said that they had to spend their paycheck as fast as they got it mm -hmm. because the money was losing value so quickly now is that going to happen here maybe not hopefully not um five percent is pretty bad and if we're, if the government's saying five percent it's probably worse so you you have to make a move quick this is not a time to be complacent. It's not a time to wait and see what's going to happen. I know for myself personally, as someone who's held gold for over 15 years, it's a very comfortable move for me to, to acquire additional product, knowing, look, the market doesn't have to go up a whole lot to cover the cost to acquire it, and then you're done. You, you are now sleeping sound at night knowing that you have that physical mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. With inflation, the data that has come out, I mean, these results are in. The results of the flip-flop is in. We rely on the Federal Reserve, the, probably the most powerful, if not the, mo yeah, the most powerful entity uh, in the world. I mean, you have the United States president, obviously a major power. But I mean, when you have the power to create a nation's money, uh, this is immense power. And we look to the Federal Reserve, the central banks, for stability. Stability in employment, inflation, monetary, even fiscal policy. We look for stability. And when you have literally a total 180 in a matter of a month there is no stability from the source of stability so in a in a time where there is no trust and credi credibility safe havens is where we need to be in safe havens proven safe havens such as gold and silver uh, need to be sought out and owned in this time not the paper stuff jerry what's the most effective way to get into the gold and silver market once you decide uh, which metal you want to go with, uh, whether it be looking at the silver to gold ratio, you just pretty much share the budget that you have in mind. It's not really about breaking the bank per se. It's about getting started. And a lot of people start off with getting some silver tubes, silver maples in their, in their hands, in their possession. Very easy to do. You can either come to the office or we can deliver it straight to your door or directly to a closest post office, closest to your home, whatever's best for you and whatever's convenient. That's the easiest way. We have m multiple methods of payment to make it super easy for you uh, electronic everything can be done remotely these days so it's very convenient but it's really about getting started with some trust trusted product lbma approved accredited product globally recognized globally liquid new and and this is what we stand by here at guild hall we we just go with the best and as long as we bring the best to the table it's up to, really up to your choice um, sometimes just like a diamond the, the silver or gold will choose you you'll just know which one you want to go with and and then you bring that product home and then afterwards you can look at other avenues whether it be the rsps or tfsas so it's all about physical follow the motto if you can't hold it you don't own it and the best place to start is to acquire some physical product maybe get a tube of maples some 10 ounce bars of silver maybe a one ounce bar of gold anything to just kind of go through the process once or twice to see how that feels and one of the best ways you can do that is to go on to our brand new e-store at guildhallpreciousmetals.com you can even go to guildhallwealth.com and then uh, up in the top right it says shop now and that'll connect you to the e-store as well you'll see the products that we have you'll see the prices everything's very clear so definitely check that out the number 18778 silver we've got a lot more we've got 
got a great article coming up in the next segment that we're going to discuss about the potential for gold and not just the potential for gold, but how silver is really going to be the one to, to go bananas in the next few years. The number 18778 silver, the website guildhallwealth.com, the e-store guildhallpreciousmetals.com. This is the real money show. You're listening on Global News Radio 640 Toronto and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website, guildhallwealth.com. If you want to discover the market for the first time, listen to this article because this is going to be a great introduction into the silver market as just one sort of angle into the market. We're going to follow that up with some of the usages of, the, of silver and why it's actually such a strategic metal globally. If you want to get more information as you're listening to the show, please visit us at guildhallwealth.com or call the number one eight seven seven eight silver And if you're feeling the itch to actually get some physical into your possession, you can go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com, our brand new e-store, and you can acquire some product and have it shipped right to your door. Jerry, we've got this article out uh, written by Rick Rule, and it's all about why silver will outperform. What is the basic part of this? So there was an amazing uh, interview of Rick Rule interviewed by Real Vision online. And you know, in light of the two major stories this week, which was the first being CPI core data coming out from the US, um, rising 4.5, the highest print in over 30 years. So red hot inflation data, uh, destroying the, the Fed's narrative of, of transitory. And on top of that, you had two days of Jerome Powell being uh, testified and being grilled uh, before con Congress on their easy money policy amid surging inflation. The Fed right now, they need to print to maintain growth and control the inflation that comes from it. While printing and digging a bitter, bigger hole, they're facing the crossroads. Do we taper or do we raise interest rates? They're totally trapped. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy closed loop because they're printing money to push down interest rates. Exactly. It's, it's like how far can you keep pushing before it just abs absolutely explodes? When do they when do, when do they lose control and they're on their heels and start having to raise interest rates because they now don't have a choice? Yeah, and Octavio Costa of Crescat Capital, he tweeted in response to the testimony saying, "But what else can they do? Taper? Okay." then who is going to suppress interest rates at record debt to GDP? This Fed is as trapped as it can be, and they may be trapped, but as an investor, you can protect and indeed profit from this unprecedented economic debacle. Ooh, and this how was, do we do that? And this exactly is a great seg to Rick Rule's recent interview. Um, number one, he brought up the triple-digit gold demand, um, which he highlights some of the core reasons being inflationary. A loss of purchasing power, debt. You know, we hear a lot about the 28 trillion, but there's also, uh, you know, there's also off balance sheet liabilities, which exceeds 120 trillion. So there's massive amounts of debt. And the real kicker, the third and most important reason of all is negative real interest rates, which is, which is, you know, continuously going down. The US 10 year treasury, as I think they're offering 1.35 in a currency that is depreciating by 4.5. So at least the US real treasury yields, for the first time in our lives, the government is telling us the truth. That is, if you, if you give them money, you're gonna, give, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna guar be guaranteed less in the future. But the fourth key for, for gold, Rick Rule really summarizes, is the US share of precious metals in investment. Right now is sitting at less than half a percent, Jeremy. And over the past 30 years, the average mean for U.S. investment in precious metals is about 1.5%. So gold, to go back to that, gold doesn't have to win the war against the U.S. dollar, he says. It just needs to lose less badly. It needs to merely revert back to the mean. Nothing dramatic, you know, inflation aside, hyperinflationary inflation uh, situation aside, this is going to revert back to the mean, and this is what's so exciting. And again, you know, gold and silver, silver does track gold. This is what makes silver exciting. Well, we'll, we'll come back to, to silver in just a second. Let, right. Let's just go back to what he was, what Rick Rule was talking about there. He was saying that, that what, what was the average time span there, that the average investment in gold was 1.5% of, of what, the population? In the U.S.? 
Over the past 30 years. Over the past 30. And right now it's at half a percent. Less than half a percent. Which is remarkable given all of the Wall Street bets and everything that's been occurring. And, you know, just from the microcosm of our office. Exactly. You don't see, you don't see much selling unless it's, you know, oh, I, you know, I need to sell some to raise cash in my riff or something like that. There's very little in the way of, of physical selling. It's mostly more buying than selling. And it seems that every, more, more and more people are getting involved in the market. So that does surprise me somewhat. I wonder if part of that stat is just over time if people were – that there was a period where it was even lower than that, right? And so we're on the upswing. I wonder if it was even lower. But what what is the potential of the price of precious metals or gold specifically if we were to get to back to 1.5%? Well, that's that's the triple the gold demand. So if we're at here, if we're at a price where we're pretty much very close to all time highs, at a half a percent demand, you know this the gains that we're going to be seeing, uh, all, you know we we can't put a put a um, you know forecast, but we can estimate that if it's you know triple the demand, um, the price of gold, considering lack of supply. Um, we'll just simply head into new all-time highs beyond what we saw in the past year, year and a half. So it's a very exciting time for gold. Um, and considering, you know, these are the uh, the dog days of summer, very quiet seasonally. Gold is um, relatively quiet as we enter into August. Then we're going to really see the show take off. So in essence, Rick Rule is looking at the participation uh, in the gold market and seeing that there is a lot of room to run and that there's a lot of people out there who could still be getting involved in the market and even at one and one and a half percent that's not a large percentage of the population getting into the market of I mean, the u.s yeah that doesn't even get you into what would be a bubble territory i think you need like 10 percent participation to get to that and we've already experienced short short supplies, shortages, high premiums, um, delivery delays. We've seen all sorts of things like that. What would it be like if demand all of a sudden doubled overnight? I mean, what do you think that could do to the price in the next few years, Jerry? I know it. it's it's bewildering because we're, we're, we're considering the era that we're in right now, the season that we're in right now to be at extremes. We talk about overvaluation of assets, um, stock markets, real estate and people taking their profits from investment properties, for example, and parketing into gold. We've never been busier. And to add a, a double that workload um, or even triple that ro workload, it's going to definitely cause a bottleneck from what we're seeing right now from the borders to, um, you know, supply coming in. We we consider this time to be a very busy time. Lack of supply, heavy demand. I can only imagine what it'll look like when that happens. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. If you would like to get a little bit of gold in your hand, you can go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com. That's our brand new e-store, and you can check out prices. Very quick, very easy. There's very simple methods of payment. You can do e-transfers. You could do cash at pickup, debit at pickup. If you're doing a slightly larger order, you can do a wire transfer. Uh, uh, you know, you could do uh, a, a bank draft, or even if you're a, a member of TD or a client of TD, you could do even a direct deposit because that's who we use as as our banking. Let's move our our attention here a little bit to the silver side of things because that was that was I like the outlook on on gold just from the perspective of. The demand could rise threefold and what that could potentially do to to the supply side of the market. Obviously, the market would go crazy, crazy, crazy. And yet he thinks silver is going to outperform. Why is that? So in the second part of his interview with the, with Real Vision, he starts off by laying the groundwork for gold and laying the groundwork in such a way that it really highlights the need for gold being uh, a safe haven asset, an insurance policy, someone else, you know, it's not someone else's liability. This is your money and it is money, which he segs into gold because, or silver rather, because he says traditionally in the second half of a precious metals bull market, silver outperforms gold because silver attracts both the greed buyer and the fear buyer. 
Now we remember,、mm. you know, it was back in oh seven, oh eight. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of risk off getting into gold for the purpose of protecting wealth. But then silver, the gains in silver were exacerbated. They were explosives, and as you mentioned, it went bananas. And we're going to see that again because of supply and demand, and because people remember remember making money in silver, remember taking profit at forty seven with us, and the greed buyer, yes, the one that we want to. You know, protect and prosper, protect and grow. It sounds so cliche, but this is what silver offers, Jeremy. It's definitely an opportunity at this time when you look around and you see things are definitely overvalued, continuing to move. You know,、um, I saw this quote the other day. Someone was saying, talking about, you know, all of these things are reaching all-time highs, but I'm scared to sell it. <laughs> so there's more to miss out on,、um, you know. That kind of feels a little greedy in a way.、Um, you know, you can always edit your portfolio, but when you look around and you look at the fundamentals of the physical precious metal market, you can see that it's pretretty obvious these things are very undervalued comparable comparatively. Yeah, exactly. And because、uh, you know, Rick Rule states that yes, gold is money, and then it's an asset. It's no one else's liability to store a value. Silver also is these things, but it's also tended to be a little bit more choppy over time. But it's his own belief that in the next ten years, silver will remain some sort of a you know choppy because it's such a smaller market compared to gold. But it will outperform gold. It has traditionally outperformed gold in later stages of a bull market, as we've said.、Uh, the fabrication technologies that utilize silver are such that I, that we think that、uh, people will look at both metals to forget to understand that. Uh, gold doesn't go away.、Uh, unlike silver, it gets burnt out. The you utilize it and it gets used up. So, you know, when we we talk about supply, they need to take into account that、um, much of the gold supply it's still in supply. It's still around. But when we use silver a lot for applications such as solar panels, as, as an example, the solar industry would not exist without the reflective properties of silver. It's also an extremely effective germicide. So when we see water treatment plant being built, as an example, you're seeing silver being consumed, just like platinum, sort of a you know monetary metal with industrial attributes. And then he concludes by citing the ratios, the silver to gold ratio,、uh, where we see you know the Earth's crust is about 16 to one silver over gold. Instead of what we're seeing today, 55 to even 69 to one、uh, silver,、uh, silver to gold ratio、uh, in terms of price. But you know what matters is utility. To Rick Rule, he concludes that it's all about the utility of physical silver. It is used in every single thing that we can think of. If you have an electronic device that has a button or a switch, there is silver inside of it. And, and we'll talk more about that in the in the next segment, sort of the usages of silver. But it's interesting what you were just saying, Jerry, about、um, about use, right? I was listening to an interview with E. B. Tucker on King World News, and he was talking about how, you know, the number one stock out there is AMC, and that he went to go see a movie at AMC, and the air conditioning was out, and he was like, "It's ten <laughs> bucks to go see a movie projected onto a screen, and this is this is the number one stock out there." It's just an example. Of how stupid things have gotten, how crazy, out of control things have gotten, and the and to me the lack of reality, the 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 disconnect of from reality of what actually makes something valuable is、mm-hmm. is very interesting. I think that's part of. I I do think that ultimately leads back to the Fed in some ways because you know you print money, these people you know borrowed money, two thousand and eight. You know, all of this upheaval happens. No one goes to jail. There's no responsibility for anything. Money can keep printing. You can just keep printing. It doesn't seem to matter at all. And and just you know, hey, yeah, okay, we'll service the debt. We'll just print more money to cover the debt. And none of it matters until it matters. Yeah, I think there is a a, a day of reckoning will come, and we don't know what it's going to look like, but it's just going to come. It's going to be one day. It's over. It doesn't. It no longer works. Right, they're going to raise the debt ceiling in a in a couple weeks time. Right, that's headed that's headed our way.、Mm-hmm. What they're at twenty eight trillion. It doesn't matter. It does it. It's it's no different at twenty eight than it was at six until it does matter. Until it does. Until it does matter, and it is going to matter.、Mm-hmm. And you can see that it is that it matters because look at what happened with、um, with the bank this week.、Um, uh, Wells Fargo. Yes. Right. You know, if you haven't heard about that so far.、Uh, 
you know, they, they've taken out the, the lines of credit. So if you had a line of credit and you were using it and you literally had 20,000 on it or 50,000 on it for your business or whatnot, guess what? You can't, you don't get it anymore. You can, you can pay it off and that's all you can do. And, um, you know, this idea of calling in loans to protect the, their own banks, I wonder, um, how much contagion there is in that. When do we start to see the next bank do yeah. that? I mean, Wells Fargo is constantly having problems. So we have to kind of stay back. We'll, we'll watch this develop watch a little it. bit because they could be an outlier. Cause again, they've had lots of problems, you know, with, They've done so many bad things and yeah. gotten into so much trouble. I can't believe anyone still banks with them, to be honest. <laughs> True. Let's talk about the usages in the next segment. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. If you'd like to get some physical precious metal in your portfolio today or in your hand, you can go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com. It's our brand new website, and we'd love for you to check it out and let us know what you think. You're listening to The Real Money Show on Global News Radio 640 Toronto, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com, and the new website, guildhallpreciousmetals.com. It's our brand new e-store. We're talking about it a lot today because we want you to go visit it. We're very proud of it. It's fast. It's easy. It's exciting. Lots of new products on there. They look sharp. The images look really sharp. I'm just impressed at how fast this thing is because, uh, you know, people would call, people will call Jerry. They'll say, <laughs> what, what's the price of a, of a 10 ounce bar today? And I'll, I'll say, let me just go onto Give our website and just the wheel of death we used to get yeah. and now we don't get that at all so yeah. uh can't wait for people to, to give us those calls uh but but see it for yourself guildhallpreciousmetals.com you know sometimes jerry when it comes to the gold market okay let's put inf inf inflation aside okay we're done with that so, with that for now for now um I always am amazed at how geopolitical gold gets. I mean, it is money. It is global money. It's been money for thousands of years. There is no doubt central banks are, are still net buyers of gold. It, it has geopolitical effects. It, it does respond to what's going on around the world. You know, this world, this week in particular was a pretty wild week geopolitically. Obviously, what's happening in Cuba is very interesting. Um, you know, you had you had protests in France against um, vac vaccine um, passports, for, passports, as well as um, vaccinating healthcare workers. I saw there was even protests in Ireland. I think you know you've got there's a lot of information coming out about the censorship on YouTube and and Google and stuff um, in the states. You've got the class action lawsuit for that. Um, a lot of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff happening, and also audits, things like things of those natures. And and I do find that our, our clientele is very interested in that and very active in that. And I feel like gold is a part of that because mm -hmm. the idea is to protect yourself. That's right. Right. Yes. It's, it's like, exactly. um, you know, gold guns and butter <laughs> <laughs> bunkers, beans and bullets, Jeremy. There you go. Um, but you know, the idea is to protect yourself. How do you maintain your freedom? You know, you don't want the idea of gold is to not have counterparty risk. You are your own central bank when you mm -hmm. own gold. So you can, you know, you can rest at ease at night. So I find that there is that geopolitical and of course it is money. So, you know, when all these countries are printing money and you know, things get a little dicey, mm -hmm. um, what are you going to pay in? Yeah. Right. And I know that they talked about there was some articles out and there's this kind of discussion about what the actual value of the gold that the Fed owns. Right. Are they valuing it at a, at a lower price for some reason? And one day will they just revalue it up and mm -hmm. and what that that entails? It would be interesting to see if banks start to acquire physical metal as a way to protect against uh, fallout from the currencies, mm -hmm. etc. Um, what do you think about the connection between the geopolitical side of things in gold well yeah it, it does shield and it is your hedge um, and protector against uh, you know things that could just flare up uh, out of nowhere and this is really about us being human you know you're not gonna keep you know you're not gonna just take punches in the face Jeremy you're gonna get your guard up you're gonna be prepared and you're gonna learn to uh, defend yourself and you're not here to uh, be you know roll the dice with our wealth per se or you know go out and you know walk around the place without insurance or drive around your your the, the, the neighborhood on the highway without insurance you got to be alert being prudent and you got to be alert you have to exactly. have your eyes open you gotta you gotta be looking around you got to be prepared to 
to, to do what needs to be done, and that's part of this. Yes, and, and part of being human is as well as asking the right questions. And once you start asking the questions and getting into the whys and the who's involved and the, and the why would they be doing this, you start to really uh, peel back the onion and you really start to see for yourself the importance of gold and why gold has moved throughout the ages uh, from country to country. Uh, and where we find the gold, we find prosperity, we find freedom, we find civilization. So therefore, you know, whatever scale that we may be at, unless a country comes in and purges it and takes it away and then leaves you with nothing. Yeah. Canada, how many ounces do we have? <laughs> we, have well, we sold it off. I, it still boggles my mind. I'm sure it boggles everybody's mind. It, some people probably don't even know yeah. that, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of gold that Canada owns could fill just like a... Uh, a, a desk drawer. That's about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, very piddly. But we have it in the ground, and we can always sell the crown land to a country to pay off some of the debts if we need to do that, or even nationalize. Nationalize the mine. Or we can do that. But this is part of the reason why geopolitics today is is one of those things that can just flare up at any time, and it's all about protecting with portable wealth, and that's gold or natural fancy called a diamond, because literally you can pick up, uh, you know, have a few ounces of gold in your pocket, a diamond in your pocket. And you're traveling. One eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. The e store guildhallpreciousmetals.com. And speaking of preciousmetals.com, the e store. We also have our natural fancy color diamonds on that website as well. You can check out. And so, what a segue. I mean, the idea of portable wealth. This is where natural fancy color diamonds do come into play because, like you said, you can hold millions of diamonds in the palm of your hand. Incredibly private. Obviously discreet. Um, I think this is a market that is due to start rising rapidly, um, give or take. I mean, I do think that ultimately we know Argyle Mine is closed. No more pink diamonds are going to come to the market, or at least what was 90% of the world's pink diamonds, which was really a trickle in terms of supply, is now gone. And I think that that will lead to the yellow diamond market moving higher and higher. Because at this point, you can really see you can look around and you can start to see that things are moving up. The prices are moving up very, very quickly. I was just even driving the car this morning, Jerry, with my wife. Boom, the price of gas went from like 128 to 135. Yeah, I saw that. Um, people notice that. People notice, well, wait a minute. What am I doing leaving the money in the bank? I need to protect it. It needs to be nailed down. And a hard asset will do that. And the beautiful thing about a natural fancy colored diamond in that respect is unlike real estate, there's never been a time where it's dropped 30%. Mm -hmm. I mean, pink diamonds have never dropped. Yellow diamonds as a whole dropped a little bit in 2008 and had a V-shaped recovery. Um, and I think that was part and parcel because the wholesalers were probably letting go of some poor quality yellow diamonds just to maintain the best part of their por portfolio and mm -hmm. inventory in hand, right? So, uh, but a great recovery. And again, these are the the record of colored diamonds is very very steady, and I think that's what's appealing to people, especially if it is going to beat inflation over time. And I think we're we're about set for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about thirty seconds. What are your thoughts? It's all about again going back to stability. We're looking for stability uh, in a world where there is none, and with gold, silver, natural fancy colored diamonds, you have a nice steady growth pattern with uh, gold uh, with natural fancy color diamonds yellows and pinks even though you know we had a down year in the 08 as you mentioned in 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 yellow diamonds up overall and over the past 15 years so again very beautiful uh, to say the least i mean they are you know they offer that wealth protection being negatively correlated to the us dollar uh, but then they're a beautiful a beautiful asset class to own and has uh, intense uh, intrinsic value. And for generational wealth. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com, the e-store guildhallpreciousmetals.com, and when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about some of the usages through the ages on in the silver market. You're listening to The Real Money Show on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. 
And we're introducing our brand new e-store, guildhallpreciousmetals.com. Please go and visit. Let us know what you think. We've got uh, all the typical products that we offer here at Guildhall. Great prices, fast website, easy to use, easy to make payments. We ship direct. You can pick up at the office and schedule a pickup, or you can even have it shipped to your door with Canada Post. We provide you the tracking number, and it's fully insured. We've been promising through the show that we would talk about some of the usages of physical precious metals. Uh, there was an article put out by Visual Capitalist about silver through the ages. But before we get to that, Jerry, spot quiz. Give us some usages of physical silver right off the top of your head that you know. Uh, for uh, medical uh, medical supplies, you have uh, silver being used in the, in the wraps. So for healing, um, you have colloidal silver, obviously, um, for medical purposes, solar panels, electric switches, um, to, to name a few, Jeremy, right off the top of my okay, head. Okay, so there's also, it's being sewn into athletic wear yep. to absorb bacteria. Um, I'm sure there's going to be even more silver used in um, protective clothing from like 5G towers and things like that. True. Um, but transition lenses, um, it's used in mirrors. Mirrors. It's used in all sorts of electronics, digital, anything digital, anything electronic. There's a bit of silver in there. Um <clears throat> Electric cars, obviously this is part of the whole green um, green economy and whatnot, and silver is going to be a big, big, big part of that. And it's going to be a, a bumpy road, and in it, I hate to say an inflationary road to get mm -hmm. there. You know, you had the president of, of Russia talking about that. Oil could go to hundreds of dollars because of it. Um, more and more people are seeing that this is going to be very, very costly because the technology isn't there, but that technology is going to have silver in it. There is a lot more silver in an electric car than in a regular um, you know, gas mm -hmm. engine car, um, <clears throat> combustible engine car. And um, so, you know, anything electronic, anything digital, you've got clothing that it's in, transition lenses, it absor naturally absorbs bacteria. So from uh, from a house uh, domestic perspective, um, economic d domestic perspective, you know, it's constantly being used in things like uh, you could put it in like microbacterial soap yeah. or, um, you know, they've put it into toothbrushes. They've put it into washing machines. Yeah. They've put it air into conditioning units. air conditioning units. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Brita filters, right? That's why your Brita filter doesn't get algae all over it because mm -hmm. it's, you know, the silver is, is absorbing the bacteria. Going back to the Roman days, where let's make our transition here, going yeah. back to the days of the Romans, they would put a silver coin in their milk to preserve the milk when they marched off to war. And, uh, and for anyone who hasn't heard the term born with a silver spoon in your mouth, well, that's exactly, it's exactly what it sounds like. If you were rich enough, they put a silver spoon in your mouth because it absorbed bacteria and that kept you, that kept you healthy. So, um, we're going full, full historic circle here. So let's, let's dig into this article from the visual capitalist and some of the things that silver has been used throughout time. It is absolutely remarkable. I haven't seen such a, a, an amazing paper that goes through the history, the evolution of silver throughout the ages. And yes, it starts from 3000 BC, where uh, you had before you had silver coins, you had a hack silver being used as a, as a, as money, figurines. Uh, as we moved along, uh, wine and food containers in the Middle Ages were being made out of silver due to its ability to really fight bacteria. So throughout the ages, there's been a a split between uh, medicinal purposes and monetary usages, um, but it's amazing how how it has just been used and has and had utility uh, throughout uh, the the years. And they all they also tie into how many tons, how many millions of ounces of silver had to be uh, mined uh, to support all of these new innovations that came out from silver-based films that are used in uh, photography you mentioned even mirrors to to help in her vanity uh, video games you're talking about toys and adhesives it just keeps on going and then to today you have um, for, you know laptops it were all on them smartphones and it just continues to laundry detergent uh, and the military industrial complex scud missiles to helicopters uh, solar panels we want to advance right we want to move into this um, sustainable environment sustainable uh, new age but without silver and without continuous mine supply this won't happen um, and not to mention we have 
people, you and I, owning physical gold and silver, taking it out of the industries uh, for a monetary uh, attribute. So it's a, it's the best of both worlds. An amazing job by uh, Visual Capitalists. Just a great job. We put that in our newsletter for this week, so you can sign up to the newsletter through the website, and uh, we'll get you a copy of the, the newsletter off, and you can view that article for yourself. You can't turn a light switch on without using silver. It's as simple as that. It is it is part of every single person's life. It's in, it's in uh, TV screens, right? It's in every TV, cell phone that you have, uh, computer, it's in everything. And if you think about the growing world, this isn't the 70s anymore where the, you know, in the gold and silver market, bull market back in the 70s, you didn't have Asia investing in the market the way you, the way you do now. You've got so many more developing countries and they all want the things that we have here. Dishwashers, cars, cell phones, plasma screen TVs and all of these things. And so the demand on silver is going to continue to be immense. And that's not to mention the green and the green economy going forward you know, if we can manage to do the transition on that. So these are just more reasons to be involved in the physical precious metal market, specifically silver, because you're going to get this combination of industrial demand, as well as monetary demand, um, and investment demand into this market. And that's why it can be so explosive, because it is such, it's a, such a small market compared to the gold market. Jerry, we've got about uh, 30 seconds left. Any last, m last remaining thoughts? Uh, yeah, we're at the mid year. And remember, we are in the dog days of summer, we're just closing out uh, going to be closing out July and heading into the um, the upward months of August so we're anticipating a really uh, good uptick in the silver and gold market so it's a great opportunity to be getting into the market now while you have some Canadian dollar strength so get in touch get in while the while the waters are calm that's that the idea is get right. in while the waters are calm and go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com our brand new e-store and you can see the types of products that we offer here at Guildhall if you have any questions if you need anything at all please feel free to give us a call at one eight seven seven eight silver and the regular website guildhallwealth.com to learn about how to hold physical precious metals in your registered account and you should do that today I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today to listen to the real money show i'd like to thank you jerry for joining us today and it's always a pleasure can't wait to speak to you again next week here on the real money show on global news radio 640 toronto